Hello my bunnies, it's Tiki Trinkets here, and today I have for y'all another polymer clay tutorial. I'm sorry that I wasn't able to get the one up last week. This is the one I was going to upload last week, but as a person, we all have problems sometimes, and this month has just been hard for me, and I don't imagine it's going to get much easier, at least not right now. But I'm working through it and doing the best I can. Also, happy Halloween as always. Here's my Halloween headband for this video. It is a little mermaid seashell starfish kind of thingy. Can't forget the headbands. Next week, though, I do hope to upload at least one or two videos that won't be polymer clay to rate polymer clay related. <laughs> I have a painting video that I'm going to be showing. It's not me painting, but I'm going to show off my artwork for the fair. No, that's going to be the following week. That's not going to be next week because I won't get it back next week. It'll be at the fair still being judged <laughs> and still being on display. But the week after that, I'll have that video up. But next week, I should be uploading my vlog of the fair because every year I go to the fair whether or not it's with my fiance or my sister or whomever I go with, I just like to upload my fun, my food, my friends, my family, all at the fair. It's one of the things I love. But anyways, while I'm rambling on, let me go ahead and grab this little gal right here. This is who we're making in this video. We are making Penny Hemsworth's Hemsworth Hemsworth from <laughs> the showdown Bandit. Oh, jeez, I almost dropped her. Oh, had a mini heart attack. And for two weeks, I'm very happy with how she came out. Obviously, with two weeks to work on her, she should have came out looking pretty good. Everything about her just came out really good. Her eyebrows are really good. Her little cheek dimple things. The way that I mixed her hair is... I'm so happy with how she came out. I mean, look at her. I did realize after I finished, there's actually a yellow strap around her hat. Which I admit, I messed up and missed it, but I'm not perfect, but she still looks so good. And if you didn't know that, you'd still love her just the same. I mean, look at her. That precision lay down of that. Oh, Y'all just don't understand the technicality to the angles and shapes of this stuff that oh, just it makes me excited. <laughs> and I'm still have the little army back here of all the other little guys. Boop, boop. Haven't sold any yet on Etsy, but... That happens, but once they sell, I don't plan on remaking them. So if you buy them, they should be one of a kind. Unless somebody desperately wants me to remake them, then I will. But other than that, probably not. But it's okay. I just really like the game. That's why I've been making it so much lately. But yeah, anyways. And the next video that will be Paul and McClay related should be my singing monsters, if I'm not mistaken. Just trying to remember the comments in my head. Anyways, I've been talking for three minutes. Thank you for understanding everything that I've been going through lately and just being patient and waiting on me. I love you guys so much. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get into this video. See you there, my bunnies. For this tutorial, you're going to need white, sunshine yellow, this dark navy blue, red from Primo, and fuchsia from Primo, and then also some scrap clay. And then also a brown mixture. First, I'm starting with the scrap clay, which you won't be visible, so you can use any colors on this. And you're going to roll it into a very small teardrop shape. Well, I mean, it's a decent size. Not too tiny. Anyways, you're going to press it down, make it flat on the bottom, but still pointed on the top. Then cut off the little nib so it's flat on the top and the bottom. And then just stick a toothpick into it. This is going to be, wow, that's a blurry photo, even though it's not sure enough blurry. Hopefully, it'll be clear to y'all. Anyways, let's go on to the white. And we're going to pre-roll all the balls that we need. Like so. And we're going to start with the largest one, front and center. Kind of hard to miss that one. And you're going to roll it out nice and flat. But not too flat to where it just tears apart. Next, I'm going to go ahead and cut out a big rectangle. And this is going to cover the piece that we just made, but not entirely cover it. So as you can see, this little bit on the bottom is left open because that's where the blue trim of her dress is going to be. Next, you're going to turn it around and cut off the excess bit, and then just stick the two pieces together and seamlessly blend them using your thumb. Once you get done, it should look like this. 
Next, we're going to go on to the second largest ball of white clay I had up here, which is this one right here. And this is going to be her upper chest. So we're going to roll this into a teardrop shape, but make it a little more boxy shape than rounded. It's kind of hard to tell, but this is more square than round. Then using the palm of your hands, press it down so it'll be round on top but flat on the bottom. Once I got done, it spread out a little bit more too, and it looked just like this. Then you're going to need some kind of cutting tool, and you're going to cut off just a little bit at the pointed area. Voila. And this little bit here, make sure it's just as wide as the piece that you had before, like so. Again, blurry photo, I'm sorry. And yes, the bottom part is a little bigger, but that's going to be blended together, like this. So that really didn't matter. So it could have been a little bit smaller, or a little bit bigger. Just make sure you blend it well. Next, we're going on to these two balls, and yes, I'm aware I have some dry hands. <laughs> I'm working on that. <laughs> and I just went on ahead, and for both of these balls, I rolled them out nice and evenly like a ball, and just cut off a little bit. And the flat pieces I just stuck onto the body. Easy. Now we're going to go on to these next two. These are going to be her sleeves. So you're going to roll these into kind of long teardrop shapes like this. And then cut off the tops and the bottoms. And then you're also going to need a dotting tool and just poke two little holes inside the sleeves. That way her arms can fit into her sleeves later. Then you can go ahead and stick these on the body. Do not glue anything together yet because you're going to need to remove these as you work. Next we're going to go ahead and move on to the sunshine yellow that I had. And we're going to pre-roll all the balls that we need. I think I missed one yellow ball though. And I also forgot, like I said, the strap for the headpiece. So you can go ahead and add an extra yellow ball here. But for now, first we're going to start with the three tiniest ones, and these are going to be her buttons. So all you have to do with these is just stick them on the front of her dress, try to make them as evenly lined up as possible. Next, I took an X-Acto blade, or you can take some kind of indenting tool and just indent the lines going up her dress. I know it looks sloppy here, but I kind of fix it up later. Next, we're going to move on to this ball I had on the far left, and you're going to roll this out to a very long snake-like shape. It ended up being about three, three and a half inches total. Then you're going to take your um, whatever tool you have to roll out with and roll it out nice and flat. Again, not too flat to where it to fall apart. Then cut it into a very skinny rectangle. Then once you do that, this is, sorry my phone, <laughs> this is going to be her belt. So just wrap it around her torso. And just like we did with the other piece, the bottom of her dress, just turn it around and cut the little bit of excess off. Again with these blurry photos, I can't today. Two weeks and it's still blurry photos. Then go ahead and blend it in together or you don't have to blend the seam. It's up to you on this part. Next we're going to move on to this ball right here. And this is going to be her like apron. So you're going to take this and roll it out flat with another blurry photo. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Then you're going to cut this in kind of a rhombusy kind of shape. I think that's what the shape is called. Then the more narrow side, just go ahead and stick it on the top of her, like, belt ribbon thing. Excuse me. And then I went on ahead and put her arms back on for now, just to make sure everything sits nice and easy. Now we're going to go on to the next two, excuse me, next three balls we had up there. The smaller set, not the larger one. And these are going to be a bow, one of her two bows. So roll these two into teardrop shapes. And then you're going to take them and press them down kind of flat with your fingers. Make sure you press down both of them, not just the one. Then after you press it down, kind of reshape it into the bow shape by pinching it. And make it kind of like bent downward too because her bows kind of flop. Once you get done with that, it should look like this. Then in order to make the little middle piece stay together, you're just going to cut off the tips. Voila. And then you're just going to shape this little ball into, well, the other little ball we had, the little one right here. Just shape it into kind of like a square shape with your fingers and then just put it in the middle. Make sure you add a little glue to keep it all together. If you can see it with all this blurriness. Then I just cut off the ends so that these would be more flat. And I used my X-Acto blade to indent two lines to give it more texture. And then I went on ahead and glued it to her top. Next, we're going to go on to the last three yellow balls that I had, and these are going to be the bow on her back. And for these, I just went on ahead and did the same process with the bow, 
but then I realized I forgot the tassel pieces that go on the back of her dress, so I just added this on. Just roll out some more clay and cut two little rectangles. Then go ahead and glue that onto her back and glue the bow on the front if you haven't already. I still wouldn't recommend gluing the arms on just yet. Now, if you want to know how to do this wood like texture, watch the bandit tutorial I did, the very first one, and I'll show you a video on how to make this marbling technique. But for now, let's just go ahead and take these three balls, and I took one and cut it in half again. This is just to show you how I got as many as I needed. Total, you're going to need five balls, these five right here. We're going to start with the largest one, which is her head, so you're going to indent two little holes. And then after that, you're going to want to, and you can lay this on the work surface, you don't have to hold this in your hand, because her bonnet's going to cover the back of her head. Next, I cut out her mouthpiece, and then I reinserted her mouthpiece, that way it looks more like a puppet's mouth. Next, we're going to go on to two of the other smaller balls that I had here. And you're going to roll these in the very long teardrop shapes, like so. Voila! And then these are going to be her forearm pieces, so you're just going to cut off a very small amount of this. As you can see, it's about a half an inch in length. You're only keeping those two little rectangular pieces right there in the middle. See? Just like that. And then I kind of bent them at an angle because her arms are kind of like bent. Next, I rolled the other two balls into teardrop shapes, and these are going to be her hands. So you're going to press the front of these, the rounded parts, down gently with your fingers. And then after you do that, get your cutting tool and cut it off separate from the rest of the arms, or the rest of the teardrops, excuse me. Then get some kind of indentation tool or some kind of cutting tool and indent two little fingers. This isn't anatomically correct, nor is it correct for the game, but I'm just a simple person. Next, I went ahead and blended these hands into these wrists nice and tight. And then I stuck these into the sleeves. Make sure you use some glue some glue for this part. Next we're going to go on to this dark navy blue primo color and I'm going to pre-roll the balls that I need which is two gigantic balls. <laughs> one's an inch in diameter, one's a little more than an inch in diameter. We're going to start with the slightly smaller one. This is going to be the back piece of her bonnet. So you're just going to literally cut this ball almost in half, about 25, 75, and we're going to use the piece that has a little bit more. Oh, that coffee's good. And then just stick it on the back of her head. If you need to, you can use some glue to make sure it stays on. Then I went on ahead and made, her, made sure her head wouldn't fall over or anything. But don't glue this yet. Next, we're going to go on to the other piece to make the rest of her blue accents. So you're going to take this gigantic ball, roll it out extremely flat. And then we're going to take a cutting tool of some kind and cut out the pieces we need. And you're going to need a really long rectangle, two small ones, and this kind of tr double triangle shape for the top of her bonnet. The bonnet piece just wrap around the top of her head. Very simple. The longer piece, the long rectangle one, and the smaller ones, we're going to do the same thing. You're going to take your X-Acto blader dotting tool and indent lines over and over and over until you get this kind of like ruffled pattern. Then just wrap this around the dress at the very bottom where that little excess clay is hanging out. See? Isn't that cute? And we don't have to make legs. Nice little cop out to make some legs here. <laughs> then I did the same thing with her sleeves and just glued those on to how they needed to be. Last but not least, we're going on to the red and the fuchsia color together. What we're going to do is you're going to mix them together to get a marbling effect, just like with the brown clays. All you do is just take them and twist them over and over until you get the right kind of like pattern you want. Once I got it the way I wanted, I rolled it out flat. And that color marbling is just satisfying. <laughs> and then you're going to cut out two rectangles that are about an inch in length. And then just cut two ends into triangles and they should look like this. And then just kind of twist it like a barrel twist. So twist one to the right and twist one to the left and they'll look like this. And then... Like I said, well, I didn't say this before, but just lift up the bonnet and just insert this under the little bonnet piece. Voila, easy. Now I took back off her arms so I could use this rubber tool and this pointed tool to do the texturing on her dress. The rubber tool, I dragged it on the dress to make these long swoops. And then for the shawl or the little rhombus shape, I just used the sharp tool to get those really straight lines. 
Next, you're going to take some brown mica powder or some cappuccino color and just kind of dirty her up because, you know, she's rough. She's been out there in the wild, wild west the whole time. <laughs> Next, I cooked it at 350 degrees for 12 minutes or for 9 minutes in a gas oven, in an electric oven, excuse me. I use a gas. Then I took some E6000 and glued her to the base after she was cooled off completely, obviously. Don't just go in hot and barehanded. <laughs> and then after that dry, I just drew on her eyebrows. Eyebrows on fleek. And then after that, <laughs> get a small dotting tool and a bigger dotting tool. And you're going to dot on her two cheeks by just going poke, poke, and just paint over her eyebrows to give her colored eyebrows. And she lo should look something like this. The red color I use is kind of a maroon that's similar to her hair color. Once all that's dry, go ahead and glaze her with at least two close coats of polycrylic floor varnish. And then you're done. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye, my bunnies.